to Shane Street in Detroit to do some very important work. All right, it's Saturday morning, May 18th. There's a guy backing up the wrong way on a one-way street. That's right, that happens in Detroit. That guy was backing up. All right, so what am I doing on Shane Street in Detroit today? Well, it's very important work. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, then you know what I'm doing on Shane Street. If you haven't been watching for any length of time, I'm just gonna ask you to do me a huge favor. Stick around, because it's important. All right, so we're at a place called Peacemakers International, and this is a place that serves the local um, drug addicted, homeless community in the city of Detroit, which I gotta tell you, I had a student go on a mission trip to a third world country, then come back and come here for mission trip the very next week. And his comment was, I can't believe that somebody so close to my home in Detroit has it worse than somebody in a third world country halfway around the world. That should say something to you. You might remember this guy. Oh, hey. That's Chris. He's down here on Shane Street with me. So let me explain a little further what we're doing. So what we do is we come down, we prepare food. Sometimes our kids come down and play music. Sometimes I will get up and give a message. I will talk. Uh, we'll pray together. We'll talk together. We'll hang out together. We'll just... It's about life. It's about living together. One of the things that has caused Detroit's downfall and community's downfall is, is segregating people. See, I really feel like if you want to control a population, you divide a population. So by bringing everybody together, which Shane Street does, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, by bringing everybody together, you break down walls and you find out things and you learn things about people, right? Yeah. Not only that, like uh, you build communities and, and relationships that last a lifetime. A lifetime. Doesn't that sound nice? All right, we got to go back. We had to stop at Whole Foods. You're freaking forks, man. Holy crap. They're expensive. Like $4 for 24. I'm like, uh, it wasn't that expensive. It was $3 for 24. So basically, we spent $22 on forks. Man, I spent. At Walmart, get like a, a thousand for like six bucks. I spent more on forks than I did on potatoes, and we made 30 pounds of potato salad. That's true. It's expensive. It's expensive. Whole Foods is expensive. Whole Foods, you expensive. So, it was a success. A lot of people ate. We still have a lot of food. Send people home with snacks and foods, things like that. Now my wife and I are taking a couple of people that we, well, we got close with over the last five years of their life and um, take some video of a very important potential thing. I actually talked about it in this vlog before and maybe soon I'll be able to tell you more about it. I can't tell you any more right now. What could I be talking about? I know the secret mystery talk is great. I actually love it. I love stringing you guys along a little bit. Okay. All right. Let me talk about what we did today and why it's so darn important, in my opinion, for all of us to go and do these things. One second, I gotta set the drone up. All right, the drone is figuring out whether it needs a firmware update or not, so I'm gonna let that sit for a second and get all of its data. But Listen, the world is full of opportunities for us to serve other people. 
The problem is we don't often take advantage of those things. And what really ends up happening is we live these self-centered lives where giving our time just can't happen because, well, I have to cut my grass or I have to uh, fold the laundry or I have to go do this thing or that thing or the other thing or the other thing. But the point of what I'm saying right now is so many people want peace and love and joy and food for everybody. And why can't people like help people who are starving? The 1% should fix all the problems. You know what? I think the 99% of us could handle the problem without the 1%. That's what I'm thinking. Because all of the 99% of us that aren't the one percenters, we don't need them. We don't need the government to solve the problems for the world. You and I should be the love and joy of this world. So here's my challenge to you. Are you the person who's standing there complaining that the top echelon doesn't pay their portion? Or are you the person who gets up on your Saturday and goes and feeds somebody who needs it? Because through that action, you change the world through your complaining about somebody else who has equal opportunity to go help somebody on a Saturday afternoon, you're not. Okay, sorry for my little rant, but um, it's important to me that people stop this crap about, what about helping people? And what do we, what do we do? And why can't those people help us? And why can't these people help them? And blah, 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 blah. I mean, seriously, we can change the world. Okay, looks like my drone needs an update gonna have to sit here for a minute thank you guys for being here thank you for watching do me a favor next time you get an opportunity to go do something on a Saturday for somebody else who needs it do it all right see you tomorrow tomorrow Sunday have a good night